So I'm going to be showing you how to do the split back stitch. It's one of my favorite stitches. It's one of the stitches I use the most for lettering. Let's get started. So for the split back stitch, I've cut off a piece of thread. It is about arm's length, but you can make it a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, depending on how you need, how much you need. So it's about this long. So next I'm going to separate it. My favorite way to separate it, and each of the guides will tell you how many strands you need. Each um, piece of thread has actually six individual pieces. This is how I like to separate it. I separate it first, and then I just take my finger and I just gently untwist and pull it out. If you try to do it too fast, you will end up with a massive tangle and just you'll just be annoyed with yourself. So I'm gonna set this three to the side and I've got this three. So next I'm going to thread my needle. I usually just stick it in my mouth, but you can get needle threaders or anything else that works for you. So I'm making it, just sticking them all together, threading it through. Perfect. Okay, next I'm gonna tie a little knot on the end. So I try to get it as close to the bottom as possible. And in general, you want two knots on top of each other. So a double knot, because sometimes I've found if I do a single knot, it will sometimes pull through. So I'm gonna do one knot and then do a second knot. And if you happen to not get it right next to each, right next to it, I just do a third knot and then it's fine. Okay, so here's our knot. Cut off the excess. I do recommend getting sewing scissors just because I found it's honestly easier to thread the needle because they're so much sharper than like your regular scissors, like, you know, the really big ones. So we're gonna do the split back stitch. And this is a three, so it's a little bit trickier with a split back stitch, but you'll still get the idea. So I'm gonna start on this line that I've drawn right here. So there are two ways to do the split back stitch. One is probably more proper, but I find one to be easier, so take your pick. So the first way, you're going, you, you start both ways the same. So you just do a simple stitch. I'm trying not to move the camera. Okay, stitch. Now there are two ways to do this. You can either go up through the middle and split it and come down, or you can go down here. I'm not even touching the table. I don't know why it's moving, I'm sorry. Okay. I found that this is the way I prefer. Then you're gonna go back down in the middle of this stitch. Now this is a three strand stitch. So you might be thinking, how am I supposed to split, like go through one and a half strands? You're not, that's okay. Sometimes I'll do four strands of this and it'll be two and two and then it's a little easier. But even if it's supposed to be two and two, it can be one and three. The idea is really that you're splitting the stitch. So that's one way to do it. The other way you can do it is go up through the middle of the stitch like this. and come down. Since you're pulling, you're going through the middle of the stitch, you can kind of pull it, which is why this is definitely my favorite stitch to use for um, cursive fonts. I just find that it looks a little bit cleaner if I go back down into it instead of coming up. That's just my personal preference. So you can do it whichever way you're comfortable with. So I'm gonna do it the way that I'm most comfortable with for the rest of this video. So I'm just going down just a little. The other really fun thing about the split back stitch is you can make it as detailed as you want. Like you can, these stitches are pretty small. You can make them big, you can make them little. When you make them smaller, it's easier to do the lettering, like especially if it's a smaller lettering or you want it to be like especially curvy. See if you need to pull it over, you can. The split back stitch is also really forgiving, which is probably why it's one of my favorites for lettering. I don't prefer just regular back stitch for lettering because it just seems like it always looks a little bit messy and I prefer the cleaner look of the split back stitch a little bit more. 
So again, I'm going into it. I think the official proper way is actually to come out of it, but I'm really a fan of doing it the way that works for you. So, just making sure I grabbed it. Okay, I'm gonna space down here and show you, say, what a bigger stitch would look like. I also just think it looks neater when you come up, like when you go back into it versus coming up, but that's just my personal preference. So here, I'm gonna go up in this one to show you. Okay, so I'm up in the middle, coming down. I'm making these stitches bigger. Okay. Up. And a three split stitch is a little bit trickier. It's harder to, because it's going to be uneven because there are three, but sometimes with patterns, two looks a little too small and four looks a little too big. So like you'll see whenever we do the regular back stitch, how much wider the split stitch is, but it just looks really elegant. It's just probably my favorite. It might. So for the split back stitch, I've cut off a piece of thread it is about arm's length, but you can make it a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, depending on how you need, how much you need. So it's about this long. So next I'm going to separate it. My favorite way to separate it, and each of the guides will tell you how many strands you need. Each um, piece of thread has actually six individual pieces. This is how I like to separate it. I separate it first, and then I just take my finger and I just gently 